right, we are going to, well, sorry, before we actually do the uploads, I know you're like two videos and we haven't even got to uploading. We need to talk about storing files in your Laravel app. We're going to handle, we're going to talk about S3 later on. S3 is a service by uh, AWS and basically it allows you to store files in the cloud, but we're not going to talk about any of that stuff right now. We're going to pretend that you just are using normal uploading files to Laravel servers on Forge or whatever you're using. Uh, yeah, that's what we're going to do. A lot of the same principles still apply. So we're going to talk about storage. We have some some big questions before we dig into this. When a user uploads their their avatar, where are we going to store it? So what folder? And then how are we going? How are we going to store it in the database? So what what's act what string is actually going to be attached to the user in the database? Um, and then how are we going to access it later on? How are we going to generate URLs to it? How is it going to be publicly accessible? These are all the questions that I want to get out of the way right now, so we can focus on the feature in the next video. Okay, so why don't we start with the question of what are we going to store in the database field on the user table? So let's actually go to create user table. It's the migration to create our user. And we don't have a field for this. So let's create a field called avatar. And this is going to be a string. Okay, now what would you store here? Personally, when I'm storing files, I don't like to store directories at all. So let's say that we want to end up storing this, I don't know, let's say inside storage, app, avatars, wow, foreshadowing, shoot my dupe, come on VS Code, avatar, well, whatever, okay, let's delete this, pretend that I didn't already do this already, <laughs> okay, so storage, app, and then a folder called avatars, right? And then you would have all the files in there. I don't want to store a string, the string that I want in the database, I don't want it to be like storage, app, you know what I mean? Like, and then I feel weird, like maybe somebody can hack that and do something like this and reference like a, a inner PHP file or something. I don't like that. Um, so what I like to do is just store a file name, which is generally un a unique hash. Oh my gosh. I just tried to type a unique hash and I just got punished. So, oh my gosh. So some unique hash, this video is crashing and burning. Some unique hash, right? That's all I want to be in this field. So because of that, when I want to actually access this file with, uh, let's say, storage, um, get, you know, if I want to get the file, and then let's say I have like the user arrow avatar, something like that, uh, that's not going to necessarily work because it needs to be inside the avatars folder. So maybe everywhere I'll prepend like, okay, avatars, right? Avatars slash dot user. You could do that, but it's still, I don't like that. We're hard coding these directories. So what I'm going to end up doing is creating, oh my gosh, even my grammar is off. We're going to create a new storage disk called avatars. And then we don't have to worry about folders at all. The storage disk will specify the folder itself. So let me give you my little hot tip on storage disks. You may have thought that disks are like a deeper thing or something that you don't really need to configure. Like I'll just use Laravel's defaults. You know, Laravel's default disk is just the local driver and it'll store stuff inside of storage app. Um, so you may have thought like that's that's what's up. And like, oh, maybe maybe I'll need it for the times I use S3 and I'll have to do storage disk S3 and then get the file or get the file name or get the size or copy it or move it. You know, you know the storage facade if you don't go in the Laravel docs and look it up. Storage disk, right? Well, here's the thing. I create disks out the wazoo. I create storage disks for everything, and they're just copies of other disks with specific directories. Here's the reasoning. Think about if you have an A tag all over your all over your app with a href, and then you're you know you're like linking to or you're posting to an endpoint like contacts add right, and then like an ID or something like that. And then you want to change that route and then you have to find all in your app and it just gets ridiculous. So for that reason, I use named routes. I don't, maybe this reference is lost on you, but if you name your routes, you can do something like this, contacts.add and then pass in an ID, right? I love named routes because I don't have to hard code references to URLs everywhere. I can rely on an abstraction, this like sort of URL route variable. Okay. Storage disks are the same thing. If you ever find yourself hard coding directories places, you need to stop and think, hey, can I use storage disk for this? And this is, so it's the equivalent. So now you reference the disk and it contains the folder. So that if you ever move that folder or move that whole thing to an S3 bucket and change the folder name or whatever, your whole system still works. Okay, does that make sense? Let's configure this storage disk avatar so that we can actually just store a file name inside of our database, okay? So we're gonna leave this, this new field, 
get rid of this. And we're going to create an avatar storage disk that is going to use a folder in storage app called avatars. Okay. So let's do that. How do we configure storage disks? Filesystems.php. This is a config file. So in config filesystems.php, this is where you configure your storage disks. So by default, it's the local disk. So here's the local disk, which uses the local driver, kind of confusing disks and drivers, but whatever. And then here's the directory that it uses, storage path app, which is our storage app. Okay. Well, we want to create one that references storage app slash avatars. So we can create that new folder here. It'll create it for us automatically, but whatever. We're creating it. Storage app avatars. And I'm going to create a new driver called avatars. Okay. And it's going to use the local driver and the root is going to be storage path app slash avatars. Okay. So now everywhere I want, I can say storage disk avatars. And now if I do get or move or get file name or whatever I want to do, get file size, whatever I'm doing, I can just pass in the name of the file and it's going to automatically use this folder. Okay, great. Uh, so that's sort of good enough, kind of, sort of, but here's the thing about our need right now. We're going to leave this right now. Here's the next question. What do we do about public avatars? So when we upload an avatar, we want to show it to a browser. A browser needs to be able to access an image URL. And if you have something inside your storage directory, this is all inside your app. It's below the public directory. Everything in public is accessible from the browser. You can do slash favicon.ico and you'll actually get that file. But everything underneath is hidden for security reasons. So when we store these avatars in storage app avatars, they're hidden. So what we could do is we could actually, instead of storing them inside, we could store them right in the public folder. We could say public path. Uh, avatars or something like that, right? We could do that, but uh, it's inflexible and I don't know, I think there's there's a better pattern available to us and that is symlinked directories. So what if we keep this directory and we create a symbolic link in our system to link this directory to a fake directory inside public so that we can still access the avatars from a browser, but the actual files are stored inside this storage folder where they belong next to all the other stored uploaded files. Does that make sense? Hopefully it does. How do we do that? So take a look at this. Here's the public disk that's already configured for us. Driver local, root, that's pretty much, you know, that's about the same. But then there's a couple other things. There's URL and there's visibility public. So let's copy those over. The URL uh, we want to be, so this is basically going to allow us to do this. If we say storage disk avatars, if we want to actually generate a URL, like a full, I'm talking like HTTP colon slash slash surge dot test slash avatars, you know, slash PNG, whatever. We can do that with URL. That's a method that exists. And then you can pass in the file name. So to properly generate the URL, we need to tell this disk what the base URL is. And it's app URL slash avatars. Okay. And then visibility, when the uh, when the files are created, they're going to be publicly accessible. So this is like file permissions. And this is also going to be used on, uh, if, you, if we were to switch this driver to S3, to use an S3 bucket, um, which would be a little bit different, but sort of similar, visibility would set the visibility to public on S3 so that the users could view it from S3. Okay. Are you following? Here's the next question. We have this URL, avatars. I feel like we should drop an image inside of there to kind of demonstrate this. Let's do something. Yeah, let's do that. Let's manually, let's pretend that we're uploading a file here. So let's do, okay. Hopefully you're not seeing like private things. Do I have private things here? Here is a headshot of me and I'm going to drag it inside of avatars. Okay. And let's just call this headshot.jpg. Okay. So I'm going to go into artisan tinker storage disc, and this is going to be avatars. Okay. And now let's say get, or let's say all files. And there we go. We're listing headshot that we just added. Fantastic. So what if we create a URL for headshot.jpg? Okay, so it created a URL, HTTP colon slash slash surge.test slash avatars slash headshot.jpg. So if you think about it, a browser, when it sees this avatar slash headshot dot JPEG, it's going to go, it's going to search for, uh, you know, inside the public directory, it's going to go avatars, which doesn't exist. 
and then headshot.jpg. That stuff doesn't exist. We need to create that sim link. So we could manually do that. If you know bash, it's like, oh, I'm forgetting like ln or something, ln hyphen s, whatever. You can symbolically link manually or fortunately Laravel makes this really nice and easy. So here's the symbolic link section of this uh, configuration file links and then so it has some default stuff but we're going to change these defaults it's like hey link the public path avatars we're going to change this it's going to be avatars to the storage path app slash avatars right okay now it didn't just magically sim link it we need to run artisan storage colon link so we do that and now it's saying hey the public avatars link has been connected to storage app avatars so take a look now in public we have a folder called avatars and this is vs code's way of saying this is a symbolic link and then we have headshot so now that public facing url that we have here let's actually copy it and paste it into a browser and we can access it now cool makes sense okay so i think that's generally it uh, we've we've configured our storage disk and uh, with our drivers and everything. We understand all that. We have the symbolic link. We even have a fake little headshot in there. I think we have the tools necessary to get started on actually freaking uploading the file. So I'm going to see you in the next video where we do the actual thing. Okay, see you there.